No, welcome to the part where we want to talk about now bringing the text uh, into a real, in a more you know, maybe clever way or more optimized way. So we're going to bake the text out into um, the texture. So here we have the Python uh, data and we basically want to um, fill a big grid with the text. Um, and we're going to just render it out and then in a shader we will then convert that data back into it. So first thing is how do we now uh, get from all these points a uh, texture? Of course, this will be a loop for each point. So for each point that we made, we will then create the text uh, for a add port. So we'll do it maybe here on the side, maybe a bit farther from here. And to make things uh, a bit easier for us um, is uh, here, I have exactly um, 16 points. So if you have more or less, I'm going to keep around 16 different points. So we'll do uh, a grid. And I will make this grid 4 by 4 and uh, or 5 by 5. Um, so this will be 4 by 4. So we have 16 different primitives. And I will now uh, loop over each point, I will generate the, the font, the text, and it will then match uh, match the size into one of these slots or one of these grids. So you don't have to do anything special, I just need to do like a match size into a grid. So this will be actually part of my loop as input. So I will uh, copy this as an input. Um, and I will then basically, um, each time we loop, I will select uh, either one of them. So we can just fill in the space by just matching the, the shapes. So first thing to do is I probably want to copy paste um, this logic over here. The, um, the one where I made to have the text. So let's grab this whole block. Copy paste. I'm going to make this into a sub network. Otherwise my notes are getting a bit messy. I'm just going to call it make font. And in here I would paste the whole thing. And we will then need to relink it. So maybe I will place a null node called uh, data. And from here, uh, we need to link back the font data here. So we're going to go back to spare inputs and link it with the data. And it should generate. Um, so in this case, the this column linked. So we can link it back again by doing this. Uh, let's see if this got unlinked. It also got. Uh, the, the link not anymore and here we can go to data and put it here in the wrangle let's see if everything here still works nope so we do not get the uh, references anymore so this should be fine uh, let's see if this works yeah let's see if we can get something out of it we don't have this matching part anymore but i don't think it's uh, fully needed anymore, so may just delete this part. So let's see how this looks. So we have now Supermart and we have the text. So we can maybe uh, play around with the sizing notes. So when we generate our main text, uh, maybe we can either choose, I'm gonna reset the values here. I'm gonna either uh, probably just leave it like this and um, I will here uh, match my subtext with it. So I'm going to set this um, x to min. The scale I'm going to turn off. And I will remove that as well. Let's see if the y-axis should be set to max and min. So we can sort of like nicely have that underneath there. Maybe and scaling should indeed be on. Let's do scale. Let's do um, Y. Like so. Yeah, that should uh, work. And we can always here put some spacing in between. And this is then my output. So here, uh, sub network output is our text like so. So the one thing that I now want to do is um, I want to extract one of the primitives here and then match it, uh, match my uh, text to that primitive. So what I will need is to create here the metadata and I will then do a blast. So I will now create 
I will now create here a spare input, uh, link it to the metadata, and then here say to detail uh, minus one, uh, get iteration dot zero, and close it off. And that should give uh, the lead one of the primitives. So you want to reverse that. And uh, I'm going to extrude this as well because we want to match the scaling. So that's why I'm going to apply slight extrusion. And we can just do like a match size and like that. I probably want to rotate my font as I noticed that it's in the wrong, uh, wrong rotation. And now we can do a match scale. So now we have that and um, we want to then do maybe scale this a little bit down again for having some uh, padding and spacing between different uh, logos so let's do uh, 0 0.095 and we need to set a pivot of the center so i'm going to use again the dollar sign center x uh, center uh, y and center z and let's see how if this works so now if it all went right, we should have uh, everything nicely labeled or nicely next to each other. So you can play around still with the scaling if you want a bit more spacing in between. But now we have them nicely next to each other. So we, this is everything laid out in a 4x4 four four, uh, grid. So we can actually uh, think about using this. The only thing left is to do a baking step. So we're going to use the UV projection based on the uh, mesh here so if you projection you can do initialize projection it's reversed yeah and then we do maps baker again and the only thing that we technically need to bake is more like an opacity map um, so let's see opacity let's do either 2k or 4k you can always like shrink it down if you bake 4k so maybe let's just quickly do 2k and the mapping here can also be set like that so it should be fine and uh, let's just see and everything went like expected we have our text now in a texture so we can use this now in game to pick one of the uh, these parts as a slogan now that is done uh, the only thing is now, how do I actually use this texture? So I have this texture, but how do I use it? Like I don't, I cannot just simply use my UV data because uh, it's it's working with the trim sheets. So we're going to do an additional UV channel that covers the, um, the data that is needed for this. What we're going to do is uh, on style one and on the other styles, we need to um, create like a new UV channel, UV2. And this will then cover a zero to one space for this. I will be building a small system uh, for this. Um, so here, let's um, do UV projection. And with this uh, UV projection, it doesn't matter where it is, so it can be somewhere like this. And we're going to use the labs, call, uh, labs node called UV um, unitized. This will sort of like normalize the UV. If we go into the UV space, um, it's yeah, it's a bit difficult to see, but if we go here, it's like uh, normalizing. Uh, we probably want to enable here um, the modes from uh, use uh, input UV. As you can see, it will uh, this one actually uh, rotated to UV. So we now have it nicely uh, like we would expect to. Now we have that data. Uh, I want to rename this to UV2. So with vertex, we have a UV. And we want to make a new UV channel called UV2. In theory, we can keep it like that. But in, in case, let's say you, you want to use this technique somewhere else, we can also use something which is called a uh, copy attribute. So let's say um, right now we also basically broke the default UV. So um, it is possible to do like a here, like um, a UV uh, copy of the attribute. So we're going to basically say uh, copy UV2. So it will keep your main data and it will just copy over UV2. So in case we would yeah, destroy something like the original UV, um, we're just going to copy over that new UV data. 
So I think that's just interesting to know that sometimes you need to branch off and calculate something on the site and then transfer or copy the data back over. And uh, we're now good to go. So we have now that data uh, like this. So that is done for number one. I'm going to copy paste the setup in case I need it for the other ones. Let's go to number two. So for number two, it's going to be the same, but we only want to have the front uh, plane. Uh, so I think it was over here that we made that setup. So we did an extrusion, um, but I only need like this um, this front panel. So if I enable here the front group, which is the front part here, uh, we can target that specifically. Let's paste our setup here and replace that. Then we can, uh, can project UV. We can probably say here only the front UV. Then we have the same process and apply back UV2. Uh, yeah, so in theory we should have back uh, that uh, UV, uh, unitized or uniform or normalized UV. And then we can just put it back like that. So that should be fine. Then let's go to the next one, style number three. So this one is again a bit more uh, interesting and different. So we have a shape like this. So this is the full board and we need to have the text of the texture specifically here. So we need to be careful with the UV mapping of UV2. So we're gonna use the same system. So copy and paste this network, but um, we want to do a, a group. And this group will be the front uh, part. So we're going to uh, here, I'm gonna call this front, we're going to be based on normals, which is gonna be here a one, and we just need to lower the angle. So this is the front element where we will see the text. We will want, we won't see the text on the back, so we don't need to have a UV2 there. So we have the same process. We want to apply only this to the front part here. And then we will have uh, the UV2 and it should uh, work uh, like that. So again, the only problem here is that we will have this uh, bottom part. So if I go to UV view, we actually want to offset this. So we want to move this around and I will use a little bit of effects for that. So let's place a wrangle and we're going to just put a simple if statement. So your wrangle itself should set should be set to vertices since this uh, UV is calculated or stored in vertices. Then we will do a simple if statement. If the UV dot Y is bigger than 0.5, uh, then we will offset the UV. So that means that everything that will be bigger, which will be this part, will be offset. So if uh, that happens at UV dot Y, uh, we'll receive minus, let's say, 0.1. And you can see we're now offsetting that, so we can push it a bit more. Um, again, it's a bit hard coded, but you can get the idea that basically the bottom part needs to be a bit moved down, so it doesn't conflict too much uh, with the text. So I think 1 or 1.5 should be uh, good enough uh, for us to work with. And then we just plug it back in like so. Then we have the last one, which is the board. So with this, the board is like hanging with the metal part. So the board is roughly over here. So this is the part where I need to do the UV pass. And the only thing I need to be careful with is um, I cannot fully use my setup. I, I'm going to just do it simple and cut off half of this uh, piece um, like so. And I'm going to copy paste this part. So we're only projecting uh, the text like this and then we want to uh, transform this 180 degrees and then we have our board back by merging these two and then we have uh, we, then we just basically mirror the uv so if we display text it's not going to be inversed or mirrored so it should be fine uh, to keep the structures this is going to be my new board setup so if you move back to our output uh, we can always manually override UV2 here at the end, like metal in theory. Uh, okay, so this was, uh, I forgot to rename this, so metal. And this was then the, the board. So in theory, metal will never use the UV2, so we can force um, with a wrangle to set UV2 zero always. So let's now, uh, again, export this again. So I removed my FBX node, but I will just quickly make it here.
And so here in Unreal, this is my very basic material. So I just applied basically the normal map. And now if you would apply the that texture with all the naming in it, and if I would save, you will see it would look like this. So it would look very weird. So we want to, of course, target this to a different UV. So I'm going to place the note here. So we're clearly using a different UV. So let's now save this. So if everything went right, uh, we will now see all of the names. Because again, we went from a 0 to 1. So this UV2 uses a full uh, UV space. So we want to multiply this by an amount, or we want to basically like, zoom in uh, so we can uh, get number one, for example. Uh, I'm going to build a small logic for the setup. So I'm going to get a number. So we'll make a parameter. So let's say like store a number. So in this case, it could be, uh, for example, number one. Doesn't matter. Or number five. And from here, I want to then find out if it needs to be this one, this one, or this one. I want to like have a logic that zooms in on this. The other thing that I know is that we have a 4x4 four four, uh, tile uh, spacing. So I have 4 on the X and 4 on the Y. Uh, so I'm just going to use the value 4. So in case you use another one, uh, like a 5x5 five five or something else, we need this value. Make it divide. So divide. I'm going to divide my UV coordinates here. Or actually multiply it here. So let's do multiply like so. And let's save that. So you can already see it here, it's like zooming in on the first, um, like we're zooming in on, on the first part of the texture, which is going to be this elite uh, store thingy. Um, then we want to calculate the logic that if we change the store number, we basically add an offset. So we're going to add while offset. So there are a couple ways of doing that. So let's, cal let's calculate the X uh, version. Uh, so here we're going to use an F mod, which is uh, similar to the... Um, uh, modulo. So we're going to use that and we're going to do divide by 4 or divide by this value. So again, it's, 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 since everything is 4 by 4, it's easy to, uh, to keep track of this uh, data. And we're going to do append many, uh, like so. so. This is the x value. So we're going to just add these values and this will then be my new value. So as you can already see, it's like jumping to the next uh, store. So if I now would uh, do number two, we now have another one. Uh, so probably we are still missing the uh, the other direction, so the Y. So if I press number five or number one, I think both number five and one uh, are the same. So we need to have an additional logic for this one. So we need to do, oh, and we need to divide our value by four. Then I'm going to do four and then do another divide by four. So if you use a different uh, uh, layout, this is four by four. If you use like four by five, you need to divide these things differently. And this is done. And in theory, we should now uh, work. So number one and number five uh, should have a different value. And that's correct. So number six. And number seven, number nine. So we can now have different values. So you can see that's all working. So we have everything almost ready to go. So I, I'm not necessarily going to go over the full material creation like I mentioned before, but we can literally use this now for masking. So we can uh, mask this with uh, certain colors. Like if you have a texture for your colors, uh, you can like bring them in and mask it. So I'm going to maybe just give it like. Uh, let's maybe grab some basic colors here. Uh, and let's like so. And let's press save. So as you can see, you can just use a lerp to easily mask things out to make it a bit more unique. Or well, add your own material, of course. That was basically then it for this video. So we baked the data into a texture and then we create a UV2 channel. And then we create with a shader within the shader, we use the UV2 channel to map to the right texture.